welcome back again today we're going to discuss about the types of robots okay types of uncrewed vehicles okay in wikipedia they are saying uncrewed vehicle so one is remote control vehicle or you always say rc car rc plane rc quadcopter so these are the uncrewed remote control vehicle okay we say rc okay radio controlled okay or radio yeah uh, radio frequency controlled or remote controlled vehicle and second thing is unmanned ground vehicle the vehicle those are unma uh, unmanned but it can control by autonomously or by a remote control and then unmanned aerial vehicle you can understand by the name aerial vehicle means there are number of types one is unmanned combat aerial vehicle that means the vehicle that used for uh, for how to say military purpose then miniature uav small size uav then delivery drone you can you can hear from this market like amazon dhl they are trying to uh, introduce some drone for delivery their items and of course micro air vehicle which which is very very small size robot or aerial vehicle okay and then the target drone like you can send a drone it will just hit to the target or it will arrive in a specific target usually they use for how to say uh, target ammunition they use this kind of drone okay and after that we are going to uh, introduce you or we are going to show you something about autonomous space port drone ship like that used in SpaceX I will show you the picture and then unmanned surface vehicle it's actually surface means water surface okay so the robot or the unmanned vehicle that used on the surface of water and then unmanned underwater vehicle so unmanned underwater water vehicle one can be remotely operated or can be the autonomous okay and lastly the uncrewed spacecraft like robotic spacecraft or space space probe like uh, you know most of the uh, rocket okay those are autonomous or uh, th those are the thing okay uncrewed spacecraft okay where there is no crew okay most of now now uh, most of the rockets are uncrewed so this is the remote control vehicles you can see here we also have we have also have given two of our uh, robot one is Chandrabot and another one is Mongothari all these are remote control like we control from remote okay our robot perform uh, uh, far from us maybe 100 to 200 meter or 500 meter we can control them by using the camera on the onboard camera of the robot and we can control from remote okay so this can be an example of remote control vehicle one is military vehicle military robot which is used for diffusing the uh, uh, bomb or something like this and you can see another one is remote control quadcopter so this is the unmanned ground vehicle okay unmanned ground vehicle that means the vehicle that travel on the ground as i told you so yeah the application of robotics is on military purpose okay i don't like it but that is the reality okay we cannot uh, overlook this thing so these are the types of unmanned ground vehicle i i believe autonomous car are also the part of unmanned ground vehicle okay uh, i believe the car or the device that move on the surface on our earth those are called unmanned ground vehicle it can be autonomous or it can be remote controlled okay then unmanned aerial vehicle you can understand here the name unmanned uh, combat aerial vehicle like you see these two are used for uh, remote bombing okay i don't like it but yeah these are the part of actually robotics okay so one is unmanned combat aerial vehicle which is called SAAV, UCAV then uh, miniature AUV or UAV okay you can see here very small size drone and then the delivery drone you can see here D DHL is using quadcopter for delivering their items and of macro air vehicle yeah you can see the size okay it's on the on fingertip okay very small size vehicle and you know in future uh, scientists are trying to build a nano robot 
okay, that will be able to find the cancer cell and diffuse those, those cell uh, from its, yeah, uh, by, by doing some activities, okay. So people are trying to make nano level robots, okay. So this is also another application uh, of, of robotics. And then the target drone, okay. Here you can see here, so you can target, uh, so target something and it can hit that place or it, it can arrive on that place. Okay, so these are the unmanned aerial vehicle. Yes, this is autonomous spaceport drone ship. I believe all of you have seen uh, why SpaceX become so popular, why SpaceX become so, uh, how to say, uh, could, could grab the market. That means the spaceship market, why? Because they could make, they could make things cheaper. Like they are sending, before this time, before SpaceX, NASA were building their rocket that was just destroyed. Like they don't use that rocket for a second time, okay? But SpaceX, what they have done, they are, how to say, they are, they're reusing their rocket, okay? Rocket cylinder, like for the gasoline. So it's autonomously landing on some place on the, on the water surface. So they are calling it spaceport drone ship okay the ship also can move according to the information and also the uh, rocket also can land on that ship okay so that is another very interesting thing and then unmanned surface vehicle as i told you water surface on the water surface so this uh, vehicle has no human being inside it but it can be controlled from remote okay so it's a surface vehicle surface water surface vehicle Okay, and then remotely operated underwater vehicle, which is called ROUV. Okay, so this is a uh, remotely operated underwater vehicle. So, so remotely operation, underwater remote operation and AR uh, on the AR is not the same. Okay, you know, uh, the, the same signal can, can go under the water. Okay, so for controlling the underwater vehicle, they need to use different kind of signal, okay? And autonomous underwater vehicle. So I see here are two of our project uh, on the bottom. We have uh, Duburi version one and the second one is Duburi version two. Both of those are uh, autonomous, okay? Like on the first, first one, we couldn't implement the autonomous part, but on the second one, we could implement the autonomous. Oh no, no, on the first one also we could implement, but it was not successful. But on the second one, it was successfully completed its, its task, not on the battleground, but in our uh, test, okay? So next is parallel robot, okay? So there are a few parallel robots. One is flight simulator. Like you can see the kids are playing in some flight simulator game or uh, fly, uh, car simulator game. So for that kind of purpose, parallel robot can be used, okay? Or the concept of parallel robot can be used. One is milling machine. On right side, you can see one is milling machine that can be used for, how to say, uh, for CNC cutting, like to make shape of something, like it can cut from top, top and from side. So it can build something according to our requirement. It's, it's, it's like a 3D printer, but 3D printer, put it some element on a surface and uh, one level, then another level, then another level. But uh, milling machine is not like that, okay? It just cut from top and from side. So by cutting a big piece of things, it make a shape of something, okay? So, uh, so that one is the example of milling machine. And the third one is cable driven parallel robot, okay? You have seen this thing in cricket stadium or in the football stadium. You see there are a spider robot, okay, a spider camera, okay? So these are the example of cable driven parallel robot. Okay, so all these are the examples of robotics, okay? So you see there are huge market. I can see if you can build a robot for cleaning the uh, uh, a glass, okay? Or there, there are number of building which is used by the glass. The outside of the building is by a glass. So if you can build, and, and this is the big challenge to clean the, uh, outside of the glass, okay, outside of the building or the uh, outer surface of the glass. So if you can build a robot for cleaning that glass, it can be, you can get a huge market, okay. And of course, you know, the, uh, the spider camera is very expensive, very expensive, okay. If we can build at least a spider camera concept on some 
uh, tennis tennis uh, te 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 tennis game or some table tennis uh, court it it would be it would be good even you can start with that and then you can go for football stadium then you can go for cricket stadium but it has a huge market for information so if you can build if you can build such a robot it would be very very nice okay so as you have seen again we need mechanical ideas for building this kind of robot we need electronic circuit to control this thing and of course we should have a very very good software to implement this issue okay implement this thing so this is the application of parallel robot and then 3d printer as i told you 3d printer it used the filament and it it, it drop uh, in one layer then uh, it, it go up and then it drop the filament on second layer then third layer fourth layer in this way it can build a very interesting thing okay so 3d printer is changing the world okay because before some time or before some days we had to build uh, in bangla is a pharma okay so we had to build the uh, you have to build the thing by cutting the uh, wood or plastic and we had to build the professional thing but now we can design by CAD software very easy CAD software and then we can just print by using 3d printer okay nowadays people are making the arm claw these are these things and of course these are the cup and some other example here you can see uh, some toys okay we can build by 3d printer so 3d printer is again one thing is going to change the world okay and nowadays now 3d printer is just printing by the plastic but people are doing research to print by some metal okay so if we can print by metal the world will be really changed okay maybe it will not become so cheap maybe it will become expensive but after a few years few decades it will become cheap okay so the world is going to change by 3d printer and then subsystems okay on uh, next session we are going to discuss about detail of our main three subsystems but take a look here uh, for robotics and all other uh, digital system or hardware system it should have five subsystems one is sense or for perception or sensors unit that can perceive the world or perceive the environment like we have five sensors one is eyes nose tongue skin okay and ear okay so we have five sensors so our robot can have a number of sensors and the sensor fission second thing is you should have a good planning okay so usually we human being we have a central planning system like everything we receive from our body and we plan here whatever we see the information goes to our brain our brain process okay so this is the central processing unit okay our central we process it but for robotics there are some other way like it can be reactive that means reactive means if something happen it will react on the same time okay you don't need any central processing uh, unit okay so that can be reactive or can have a central unit okay that can process okay so there are uh, and of course for planning there are number of algorithms this is the combination of algorithms okay like for uh, which is the shortest path or which way we should go or how we are going to perform this task okay like coloring problem or how uh, we are going to spray the car okay like there is a car we need to color it so in which way will be the shortest way to complete the color okay so these are the issues uh, this, this to performed by the robot okay so planning is another very very important issue of a robot and then the act or motor action okay like what kind of task is going to perform or what kind of display is going to show or what kind of sound is going to make for our awareness or something like this okay so that is another very important subsystem of a robotic system and then power is another important subsystems like for drone or for aerial vehicle we should have very lightweight uh, power system but for a uh, for a car or for ground vehicle maybe we can have heavy but cheaper power unit and for this kind of very useful uh, tiny system we should have the system that consume very low power and we will be able to use very low power consumed battery okay so or very how to say tiny battery okay so power is going to play is, is another important subsystem and the last one is communication is another one of the most important subsystems of robotics like you need to control from remote you need to communicate with a with, with a robot or you need to uh, send some commands from 
very far from thousands of kilometers. Like if you talk, if you talk about the interplanetary robot, then you have to uh, send the command from millions of kilometer behind. Okay, so for communication is another very very important issue for robotics. Okay, so here is the hardware architecture. Uh, usually we discuss this kind of architecture in uh, interfacing course, but here take a look again. We have divided uh, computing system in two parts, like digital system into two parts. One is high level computing device where we use high end processing element, where we use high end input device, where we use high end output device, like high end input device means keyboard or complex input device like keyboard, camera, microphone, these kind of things. And in the same way for output like complex uh, monitor or uh, like like complex output unit, okay. But for lower part, lower unit, we really use very simple input like few uh, keys, okay, or few button, few switches, or few very uh, very tiny sensors. Like that sensor only can give the value from zero to two fifty five. Like sound sensor or light sensor or uh, rotation sensor. Okay, we, we, you can use very very simple sensor. And then we will use low performance uh, processing unit like uh, Arduino or microcontroller unit, something like this, okay? And in the same way, it will control very simple things, things like a motor. Just you will give one, it will turn on, you will give zero, it will turn off, okay? Or some LED or some uh, LCD, this kind of very, very, uh, how to say, uh, very, very, very tiny or small or low performance output unit. So we divided uh, this architecture in two, two parts. One is high end unit, another one is low end unit. In robotics, we use both of this part. Okay, For interfacing, the lower part is mainly used for interfacing. But nowadays, in before few years back, if you, if you talk about few years back, at that time we were using the lower unit for building a robot. But but nowadays, we use the high performance machine like Raspberry Pi, uh, Jetson, uh, Jetson Nano, or even NAC PC, or even the full laptop we used on a, on, on a, on a, on a, on a robot, okay? So now, robot become very high performance machine, okay? Uh, for, for, to perform some task, to take the decision, since AI is now implementing inside a robot, okay? So uh, now we need high performance PC on, on, on board, okay? So, that is, that is the thing. So one on, on left, we can see there is input unit, then the interfacing for high-end device, and we are calling it the calibration circuit for low-end device, then the processing unit, and then the again interfacing for high-end device, and the driver or controller for low-end devices. And on right side, you can see there is output device, and one is high-end output device, and another one is low-end output device, okay? and. Of course, at the top, there is a communication. So each part need to communicate with another part or each machine, each digital system need to communicate with another digital machine, okay? Now we are saying it machine to machine communication. So nowadays, one machine need to communicate with another machine. So this is a machine and another, will mach another machine will have the same architecture, okay? So, uh, so that is another important issue, like communication is another important issue. And on the bottom, there is a power. You can, I, I dotted the power unit so that um, to make you understand that each of the units can have separate power unit or all machines can have a single power unit. Okay, so that is the architecture, uh, general architecture of a hardware, uh, hardware device or robotic device or digital device, whatever, whatever we say. This is the common architecture of a of a uh, digital system, okay. So thank you very much for today. On next session, we are going to discuss about very extensive subsystems of robotics like sense, plan, act, how a robot sense, how a robot plan, and how a robot acts, okay. So that is the thing we are going to cover on next class. Thank you very much.